Number one topic, hot, hot off the press, is news that Drake, Drake, the biggest star in hip hop at the moment, right? One of our number one artists got booed off a stage, right? Something you probably never hear, right? Drake getting booed off a stage, but it happened. It happened. It happened um, this weekend or just this past weekend at Camp Flogna, which I'm sure most of you guys are aware of. This is um, Tyler the Creator's um, yearly festival that he's been doing. I think it's two, 2016. Um, Tyler Creator is a very interesting character in hip hop because he's essentially came in kind of broke down the doors and really carved his own lane and did it in a way where he didn't have to fuck with anybody. He didn't have to have a gatekeeper. He didn't have to have a co-sign. He didn't have to collaborate with the biggest artists in the world in order to kind of get a look. He kind of did his things very purposefully and very intentionally, told us that he didn't fuck with anybody and that he's going to do things the way he wanted to do. And so far, he's been kind of proved right. He's been, you know, every album's got, you know, more more and more critical reception so far. The previous, well, the, the most recent album has been he's probably his most successful in terms of sales, in terms of p- position in the charts, in terms of critical review, in terms of fan reception. He's also been able to build on top of that with these other businesses outside of it, whether it comes to sneakers, his whole collection with golf, um, and just generally jewelry, furniture, video directing. He's doing a little bit of script writing. I know he's got a comedy show, recently got picked up. So he's got his finger in different sort of pies. But musically, we don't really get a lot of variation from Tyler because he produces, mixes, masters, and does his own music. Um, he doesn't necessarily collaborate with a lot of people. So I think the festival acts as his way to kind of let us into his, let is a living personification of his iTunes playlist, right? We get to hear and see the kind of things that Tyler Crater is interested in outside of his own stuff that he does. And if you're familiar with Tyler Crater, you'll know that he's a big lover of music, right? Just need to watch on your cover of his Nardwa interviews to know that he's, you know, he's got, you know, um, savant level memorization um, skills, picking out albums and particular song titles and album placements and producer credits and writer credits. He's a real big music nerd, right? So the festival is a great way for fans, um, you know, all over the country, all over the world to kind of fully immerse themselves in everything that's to do with Tyler Crater, Old Future, Golf Wang and all that stuff, right? And usually they announce the lineup, you know, ahead of time. They kind of, it's actually one of the rare hip hop or artist led festivals that actually feels like a festival. They actually book loads of different types of artists, a whole breadth of people. There's loads of on site entertainment, Ferris wheel, arcade games, photo booths, loads of real cool, interesting stuff that makes you feel like it's an actual festival. Of course, you can't camp there. There's no on site camping or accommodation. But when I went there in 2017, I stayed in the, I think, is it called the Generator Hostel in West Hollywood? That was really nice. Then I kind of ventured out there when I was doing there during the weekend. But it was a very good, cool event. I fucking enjoyed it. I loved it, every minute of it, right? So it's a very cool festival. But usually they just announce the festival. They announce the lineup ahead of time so everyone knows who's performing. This time, I think, was the only time in the festival's history where they didn't announce a co main headliner. I've got the flyers up here on the list so I'm going to show you. So I think this is the maybe the lineup from 2016, right? As you can see, all the all the lineup um all the artists are mentioned on there. Um I think 2017 the same thing happened too. 2018 last year, 2022, they announced every single artist Kitsy Ghost was obviously a big look for Tyler Crater last year, especially after the album came out. And then this year the co made the co made the co main headliner wasn't announced, right? So you've got Tyler Crater's name there, and then next week you've got a banner with question marks on it. Now, the conversation on the interwebs kind of to justify this Drake booing was that the rumor around the interwebs was that Frank Ocean was meant to perform. Now, if you're familiar with Frank Ocean and you're a fan of Frank's so or you're a fan of Tyler, you would know that Frank Ocean is notoriously inconsistent with his performances. There's no rhyme or reason why he decides not to turn up the particular gig. In the same vein that why Lutu is Vert, Playboy Carti, and some of these other people are notoriously no notoriously don't show up to parties or don't show up to events that they're booked at. We don't know. And for some reason, I don't know why it is with these some some of these high level artists or artists in general, they either never explain why they don't turn up or they just give you some cookie cutter lie about feeling unwell or about, you know, production issues or family problem or something, right? They just give you some sort of like, you know. Um, copy and paste reply that meant to appease the fans but if anything just generates more questions rather than answers it's very rare that an artist will come out and specifically say hey like legitimately we're trying to get this particular stage design in it didn't come in on time and i can't do the show without this right i have to make sure it shows a particular experience i don't know whatever it's very difficult to get a very straight answer from these artists they don't necessarily like to give explanation to, to their to their fans which is very annoying in that respect right so if you know anything about Frank, you also know that he doesn't turn up to shows, right? Um, I specifically went to go, I specifically went, or we specifically went to Primavera 
in 2016, I think that might have been. Um, 2016, 2018, I forgot what that year that was. We specifically went to Primavera to see Frank Ocean perform, right? And he didn't turn up. And he didn't turn up to a whole slew of um, European festival days. I think this was in a run-up or post. This is during the whole blonde uh, rollout, right? Um, he didn't show up to loads of festivals in Europe during that time. I think he only performed at maybe one. Maybe it was Copenhagen. Maybe it was a love box. A love part. Is it love box? Maybe it might be love box. One of the festivals, only one he turned up to. He didn't turn up to a lot of festivals. And it all got cancelled last minute. And if you know anything about promoting, or you, if, if you've ever put on your own club night, which is, you know, super easy to do, you, you know, go to a well-known club, you ask them to put on a club night, you might split the door or split the bar. And then, you know, you keep it moving, right? Um, you come in, plug in your system or plug in a USB and you put on a party. But you know that even to do a good, successful club night, you need some kind of, you know, run up, some sort of um, marketing idea or marketing plan. You need to be able to promote and advertise your party maybe a couple of weeks or maybe a few weeks ahead of time, right? Just to drum, just to build up some anticipation. So if you kind of extrapolate that and kind of, you know, 10 times that by a thousand, whatever, right? Then you know that a festival they plan those things way in advance, maybe a year in advance. They have the artist lockdown way ahead of time too because, you know, the politics involved in getting people to assert, to maybe turn up, maybe to make sure you're in per people's um, um, list of priorities, to make sure that they kind of have that date free ahead of time in case something else turns up. You have to make sure you're moving quickly to get the artists that you want, even because they're going to be in demand, right? If you're tired to create, it's probably going to be the people that you want to perform are probably going to want to perform other places too, right? So for it to for for anyone to believe that just suddenly now he didn't decide not to come is just insane. They probably knew this way ahead of time, right? They probably didn't knew maybe a week ahead of time that Frank Ocean probably wasn't going to turn up. This is only if the Frank Ocean rumor is true. I don't know if it's true. Maybe it was completely false, and maybe Tyler would argue that no, Frank Ocean was never meant to turn up anyway. It was always meant to be like a roller, uh, a kind of um, a rolling uh, cast of special guests performing, coming out, popping in, popping out. Maybe that was the whole point of it. We don't know. But we're never going to know that because the show was cut short because effectively Drake got booed on stage. So he comes out on stage. I've got the video here, right? He comes out on stage and essentially, um, I think he, I think what essentially happens was that the the first special guest was Uzi, then I think ASAP Rocky, and then Tyler comes out and says, I've got some more friends and then brings out Drake. Drake starts performing and instantly people start booing and reacting negatively because I think they were under the impression that the person after ASAP Rocky and Uzi was going to be Frank Ocean. So they were very much looking forward to it and it wasn't, it was Drake. And you could also argue that maybe in their defense that, you know, that sort of crowd, you know, they would argue that, hey, we have to hear Drake all the time. He's always performing somewhere in, in North America, right? There's, you know, there's no shortage. You're never going to miss Drake. He always performs somewhere big once a year. If not, his own tour gift appearing somewhere else you know performing at a club performing at first you're always going to be able to see drake sometime in the year right you can you can maybe make a plan to see him so those fans could probably argue that hey we don't want to hear the one time we don't want to hear drake is that camp vlog now we want to hear all that um as dj kelly said all that weirdo music all the alternative all the indie stuff all the kind of slightly underground stuff, all the stuff that you would never hear played in a nightclub we want to hear that now right we don't want to be it, it to be kind of infiltrated by hearing a commercial you know mainstream hip-hop act like like a drake is but also on the some side of me is like saying imagine if you paid the money to go see uh can vlog now festival right and you get to see all these amazing people what's the list of, of artists look at that list right you've got daisy you've got nakel smith slow tie radiant child radiant children sorry juno clyro summer walker one of the best albums out this year thundercat willow smith domo genesis idk the internet fk twigs gold link taco dominic fike um solange yg brockhampton tyler himself juice world her daniel caesar 21 savage blood orange the baby or oh, sweatshirt yes in bay imagine seeing all those people and then getting drake on top and then still booing does that not prove how entitled and spoiled some fans are it's insane isn't it i'll play the video now for you guys to hear it but this is essentially what happened. You know, oh I'm going to tell you, oh, like I said, I'm here for you tonight. If you want to keep going, no. I will keep going tonight. What's up? No. Frank. If you want to keep going, I will keep going tonight. He's going to stay. It's been love. I love y'all. I go by the name of Drake. Thank you for having me. And he probably did it for the love too. That's a that's a real sad part. That's why I feel super embarrassed and super sad for Tyler. Tyler's made it known that he's a big fan of Drake. 
probably it was a, an amazing look for him to get Drake to perform there. Maybe he probably couldn't announce it. Let's work out. Let's work out some theory. Let's be a little bit more educated, a little bit more nuanced as a fans, and not just kind of react knee jerkly because we didn't get the person we wanted to perform. But let's say the reason why Tyler couldn't announce Drake was performing was because you know he did it for the love and did it for the look. It was probably like a one to one, a one on one kind of hey. Um, I slid into Drake's DM said hey do you want to perform my thing he said yes and he came down right and usually those kind of events if you put on any kind of night I know I have before in the past I booked some maybe some high profile artists sometimes they'll do it for their love but they'll tell you not to promote their name so that the agent doesn't find out that they played somewhere for free right or they pay somewhere for you know some cash in hand money right so you don't promote it you don't say nothing you just keep it on the low key that's what that's what people do so maybe that was part of it, right? They did some sort of like, you know, some friend friend to friend, favor for favor for favor sort of deal. And Drake showed up for the love and essentially did it just for the love. He could be out there doing many other things, but he came down. Or maybe he was just there to have a good time at Tyler Creator's show because he happens to be in LA and he lives there. And he happened to just pass by and then, you know, Drake was Tyler was like, Hey, do you want to perform? He said, Yeah, why not? So if it's for for you to then decide to boo a person who just turned up just for the love, it's quite disgusting. And even if he turned up as a scheduled guest, it also just says a lot about fans that they would boo somebody that consistently performs at a high level in Drake, who's, ov- who's always putting on a good show, who consistently goes out there and supports up and coming artists, people that are lower than him on a totem pole. He's up there in the in the, in the, in the heavens, way up above the skies on his, on his mountaintop, right? But he's always extending his hand down and always trying to lift people up and give people a platform. You know, look at the stuff he's done for the UK scene. You know, loads of UK rappers have a lot to thank Drake for in terms of what he's done for their career. So there's a lot of good will he has um, amongst artists and peers. So it's obvious, it's, you'd understand why someone like a Tyler would be very appreciative of him. So for, but then fans would rather boo him because they went to see Frank Ocean, who's notoriously inconsistent. It's notoriously, he's notoriously known for consistently not turning up. Now, we're not sure if it's actually Frank Ocean that was meant to perform there, but that's what the rumors on the internet say. And if that is the case, he doesn't turn up for loads of stuff. The only stuff he's been able consistently to turn up to lately, as of late, has been his club night in, in New York, right? But there's obviously a very personal tie he has towards of it, especially when it comes to dealing with um, AIDS prevention and, you know, um, maybe giving a voice to the LGBTQ plus community. Something that's obviously close to his heart. He's obviously taken a lot of interest to it, but he's consistently not turned up to a lot of shows. But that's the one thing he has turned up to, his own event. So, and if he's not going to turn up to his show for, you know, imagine somebody who's a close collaborator of his, a close friend, I'd assume. It just goes to show just how much lack of respect Frank Ocean has for his fans, right? He's done that before. Like, again, that whole tour that he did in Europe that he missed the Premier Festival for, we didn't really get a straight answer as to why he didn't turn up. Do you actually think suddenly, the week before the event, production issues would cause him not to show up to a show? Most of these people, most especially the newer generation of hip-hop acts, they just decide not to turn up because they know they can get away with it because their fans are blinkered. They're annoying. They have no sense of, I don't know. They don't, they, they don't, it doesn't annoy, it doesn't annoy them as much as it should do. Like Uzi, Uzi doesn't turn up to loads of shows, but he, he still has a whole gaggle of fans running after him wherever he appears somewhere, right? It doesn't make any sense. No one's really holding his feet to the fire about why he doesn't just show up to a show. He just decides, I'm not going to go. I just, I commit to it, but I'm not going to go. Imagine the amount of people that you're disappointing when it comes to the promoter's end, when it comes to the people that are attending the festival. It, and again, the whole Primavera, there was a very much a, a quite a little drab feel. Everyone we bumped into that were walking around was really bummed out that Frank Ocean wasn't going to appear, right? We really did get our hopes up and think Frank Ocean was going to turn up, but he didn't show up. I can't even imagine what it must have been like for the kids out at the Cannes Vlog Noir Festival, right? But that still isn't justification for booing Drake. Again, let's compare the both of them. One is very much in tune to what his audience wants and is consistently delivering and over-delivering. Another one in Frank Ocean is consistently pushing his fans to the brink of like having to question whether or not they want to be his fan or not, right? The last few singles that we heard from his new project have been pretty, you know, pretty god-awful. Um, he consistently refuses to use drums in his new songs, as Joe Budden likes to point out, right? He consistently trying to push his audience to accept a different um, type of music that he's making now. He's not necessarily going back to making anything that we heard previously from Channel Orange on Nostalgia Ultra. It's all new stuff sonically that we're not very much used to from hearing from Frank. Again, you know, we're big fans of his, so you're going to trust his, trust his uh, musical direction, just kind of ride or die with him. But he's consistently pushing his fans, really probing and poking them, not turning off for shows or pulling in lackluster performances. And then that's the person that you want to boo in support of it's like 
doesn't make any sense. And again, you just feel really embarrassed for Tyler the Creator again because this was probably a really big look for him. And you can even see from this video here just how bummed out he he looks about this whole situation. Um, with a bit, there's a video here I got where he's super. You can tell he's super, super bummed out about it. Whereas this one here, he says he wants to bring. Oh, do you want me to bring out another guest? And then people are like still saying boo and all that sort of nonsense. Look at him. All right, look. He sounds a bit down and a bit and a bit again. Okay. I'm not sure. I really appreciate because I think Drake came out twice. I think that's what set the crowd off and made them go a bit crazy. And again, in defense of the crowd, anyway, let's just talk about the crowd. In defense of them, maybe it was Tyler's fault for not announcing that Drake was performing. Maybe they could have just announced Drake and then put the, the question mark banner and had somebody else, perf and then that could have filled in. That could have then left the space open for Frank to perform. And if he didn't perform, you still would have had Uzi and Rocky, so you couldn't be. <coughs> so Tyler couldn't be blamed for misdirecting his fans but I think maybe allowing the rumour mill to persist that Frank was going to turn up and not shutting down those rumours maybe built up a false sense of expectation and then of course people at that show who are very much hardcore Odd Future, Camp Flognar um, Golf Wang fans were obviously going to freak out but I never would have uh, again I, I think this, just, uh, this just shows the difference in appreciation of fans in the US and the Europe I think fans in the US are generally, by and large, quite spoiled in terms of who they get to see in North America. You get to see basically everybody perform at least once a year. So, you you, you know, you don't necessarily appreciate as much. And I think also the special guest unannounced person thing in in America, get people are very entitled to that too. Like you see a lot of people on social media demanding people, certain people can perform. There's not much, that, you know, whereas in you in Europe, or especially when people come to tour here, especially in London, you get a lot of people I see on social media saying, oh, they hope to see certain so-and-so perform or come out and do a special guest appearance. They're hoping, 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 as opposed to saying, oh, I want him, I want her. And then generally, I think as well, we have this sense of appreciation where like most of the people in the UK, that's why I think the whole special lineup and not announcing set list in the UK doesn't really work too well here. And people get really annoyed. I know I get frustrated when, especially in club nights, they don't put the set list up because we generally tend to make i know my friends or people that i'm friends with in the scene especially electronic music scene we tend to decide to buy tickets based on the club promoter the 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 people that put on the party right or based on the lineup we will just or if it's a venue for instance right you're just gonna buy the ticket and go so you don't need any sense of false anticipation or build up or secret guests to kind of sell tickets because i'm gonna buy the ticket regardless if it's fold or if it's a particular party promoter right um origins or something or in particular DJs that I play I'm just gonna go and if it's Mercy Drum Ensemble playing I'm gonna see him play I don't care who else is playing I'm just gonna buy a ticket and see him MCDE play point blank period and whoever happens to play as a special guest it's just a bonus on top of the, it's just a bonus on top of the it's just a cherry on top of the cake but I think in the US they really they they have this sense of entitlement as if the money that they paid to go and see all these people play also um, entitles them to demand that they get a certain type of special guest to come and perform, which is insane because you look at this, you look at the list of people that are performing at this year's uh, Camp Flog now, right? And I got the the fly up here on the on the screen, and that set list, right? Just the middle people here, the ones that are kind of like a bit bigger font: Solange, YG, Brockhampton, Tyler himself, Juice World, her, and Daniel Caesar. That's already worth way worth your cost of admission each person there performing is already a 30 20 dollar to maybe 50 dollar ticket anyway so you're getting your money back and some you're getting the other advantages of it being a daytime festival a longer period of time to hear more music you get to meet like-minded people a festival environment ferris wheel arcade games and pictures and all that sort of shit it's a great time so it doesn't really matter who comes out really you're always going to get your money's worth so for it, to, for it to be someone like a drake who's one of the high ticket you know artists on the list somebody that's going to command a, a a ticket fee of you know a hundred dollars and plus including booking fee and all that sort of plus booking fee to boo is just like it's just absolutely insane but again like i showed you it just goes to show just why someone like a, a a tyler can be such a cunt to his fans or why it appears that he's like that sometimes to his fans because fans can be super annoying you know, comes as he says, like, you know, in interviews, he said loads of times, you know, he wants his fans to approach him in a certain way and they can't take pictures of him driving his car because he doesn't want weirdos to come and start 
tracing his number plates, start following him around the country. Um, he doesn't want people to come up to him when he's eating. Like he's got a very particular way about how he wants his fans to interact with him. Obviously, it's too late now because you know I think all the crazy antics in the beginning of Tyler's career, career especially with the old Future Times, it has essentially garnered a particular group of people to has, has attracted a particular group of people towards him who haven't necessarily aged as well as he has over the years so he can't necessarily control that anymore but you get to see why some artists do hate their fans you understand why now isn't it? and I, I kind of understood it a lot more especially when i got really involved very much interested in a comedy circuit and following a lot of the comedy podcasts i heard a lot of comedians say sometimes they, they, they can reach a point where you have a joke that works really well but it tends to attract the wrong kind of the audience that you don't necessarily want and it can be a very um, challenging pivot to somehow distance yourself from that joke to not so, so you don't have all these chodes or all these bros or all these particular kind of political leaning people coming into your show because they like that particular joke you did. That, but you know that doesn't necessarily represent you as a person. Same with an artist, right? Like you're, if you're an artist and you've been putting out loads of amazing material and the one hit that blows up happens to be a song that you fucking detest like it's, it's hard to then try and pivot and move away from that because the fans that you've gained off of that song aren't necessarily the fans that you'd actually wanted in the first place and, and maybe aren't necessarily fans of you they're just fans of that particular song so it can be a very weird it can, very weird um balance to make and i think maybe that's where tyler is at at the moment um he's suddenly now maybe at the point now he's he can honestly say he's maybe aged out his fans he's maybe matured beyond where they have at that point in period because again i don't know maybe i would be disappointed if drake came out i might have been bummed oh, man, i feel for frank ocean but i wouldn't boo do you know what i mean i would not boo like that's something i wouldn't do because that's still an amazing person to see on the stage it's not like you're seeing fucking you know megan trainer or someone do you know what i mean it's fucking drake civil performing it's fucking it's insane it really is insane how they will do that but again, I go to show how spoiled some fans are. And you can only assume how bummed out and how annoyed uh, Tyler must be. And also, imagine what it must feel like for Drake. In this era, or especially now, it probably he can probably he probably can't remember the last time he got booed, right? Or the last time he had a no show at an event. It never probably happens. Right? He can probably announce uh, an event now, right, in twenty four hours and you know, twenty four hour turn of time and I'm I'm pretty sure he'd pack out most five seater venues right for them maybe even ten thousand seater venues so to get booed somewhere especially in front of a crowd like that right a crowd that he probably thinks is probably you know above above in some way shape or form maybe a little bit is really really a big slap in the face but also maybe a good humbling moment or maybe a good moment for drake to be like you know what maybe i'm overexposed maybe he needs to go back maybe he needs to take lessons and let's not the book of you know the Beyonces and the Rihannas who have a, a real uncanny ability to kind of completely back away and regress from media and then pop out just when you don't least expect it right I think Beyonce is kind of the master of that right um being in your face 24 7 and then kind of pulling away um maybe Drake has to kind of maybe do that now maybe it's an indication or maybe it's not maybe it's just a one-off situation where you happen to be in front of a rabid fan base who want to hear a particular kind of music and the last thing they want to hear is you right maybe that's it's just an isolated situation. But again, man, everyone involved should be embarrassed. Um, booing a Drake at Comfort no, just makes absolutely no sense. But again, fans are within their right to do it, maybe because, you know, they pay their money, can do what they want. But Jesus Christ, man, what, an, what a real, real, real unfortunate situation for everybody involved. But yeah, check it out if you want to. Um, I think next year's one will probably be better again going forward. I'm interested to hear what the Drake bar would be regarding this on his new album. You're definitely going to hear him say something about this. And again, I'm interested to see what Tyler says about this as well. Whether or not he'll come out and make a comment, whether or not he'll actually um, knock it on the head and kind of have a bit of a pause and take um, and kind of stop doing it next year. I don't know, but I really can really check it out. It's probably one of my favorite um, artist-led festivals out there at the moment. Really eclectic lineup and just generally well, very, very well put together. Um, but it's a shame that some fans are very um, spoiled and unappreciative. But what can you do?